10 most polite and classiest villains in cinematic history. Who doesn't love a good villain and their story into what made him the person they are? While villains are mostly terrifying, there are those who bewitch us in ways unimaginable. One can't help but fall for their charm and manipulation tactics on screen. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> Some villains truly embody an unequaled aura, making you want to revisit the films they starred in. These villains range from the gentlemanly Hans Gruber to the crafty and dexterous Hannibal Lecter, and in there are people like Hans Lander, Niels McCauley, or Susan Stone. One simply cannot get enough. In this video, we will explore 10 of the most polite and classic, yet villainous people in cinematic history. Let's begin. Number 1. Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Due to the lack of Tommy Corporation's legacy of greed around the globe, they're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. Hans Gruber, played by Alan Rickman, appears in the first Die Hard film, which was released in the year 1988. The movie begins with Detective John McClane arriving in Los Angeles in hopes of spending time with his separated wife and kids. He is driven to a Christmas party at Nakatomi Corporation where his wife Holly is, but the building is soon seized by German radical Hans Gruber and his heavily armed team of terrorists. Everyone at the party is now being held hostage, but John manages to escape. Now, he stands tall as a one-man army against a group of 13 terrorists and the main antagonist Hans Gruber. Time is his adversary and he must do everything he can before Gruber gets his way. Hans Gruber is a cunning thief and criminal mastermind from Germany who holds the Nakatomi Corporation Tower hostage to steal $640 million in negotiable bearer bonds. He was originally born in Germany and claimed to have been classically educated. Earlier in his life, Gruber joined the Volksfrei, a West German radical group, where he was expelled for his overly greedy and violent behavior. He used his past to be able to successfully anticipate certain attacks and defenses and find ways of counteracting them. This character has gone on to become one of the most iconic villains in cinematic history and was listed by Empire Magazine as the 17th greatest movie character of all time. Gruber isn't like most villains we are so used to seeing. He is quick on his feet, always plans ahead of time, and is usually the smartest guy in the room. Hans Gruber is the perfectly written villain because he is tough, but not too tough, and you know someone is great if they take the limelight away from Bruce Willis. Number 2. Hans Lander from Inglorious Bastards. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> this 2009 war film is set in 1941 where Lieutenant Aldo Rain leads his squad of Jewish-American soldiers behind enemy lines in Nazi-occupied France, and they have one straightforward job, to kill the enemy, and soon enough they are feared throughout Germany because of their violent approaches and tactics. Meanwhile, in Paris, Shosanna runs a cinema and is selected to host the premiere of one of Dr. Joseph Goebbels' propaganda films, and all of the German high commands are scheduled to attend this premiere including Hitler, Goering, and Martin Bormann. While the premiere intends to hopefully end the war, Shosanna has different plans as she plans on seeking revenge from the person who killed her family, Colonel Hans Lander, the Jew hunter. Hans Lander, played by the Austrian actor Christoph Waltz, is the main antagonist of this Tarantino film. Waltz won an Academy Award and Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor and the Best Actor Award at the Cannes Film Festival. Hans Lander is an egotistical and ambitious man who prides himself on his reputation and nickname, the Jew Hunter. He is fluent in several languages including German, English, French, and Italian. Several words could describe Lander's personality, but the ones that might shock people who haven't watched this film are careful, charming, and even polite, while also of course being ruthless, arrogant, and intelligent. In this film, he completely switches sides to assist the bastards in assassinating Hitler inside a movie theater, and in turn, demands full immunity for his war crimes, a house on Nantucket Island, a colonel's military pension, and be awarded the Medal of Honor. This made him one of the classiest, well-constructed, cunning villains in the history of cinema. 
Number 3. Vincent from Collateral. Collateral revolves around a Los Angeles cab driver called Max Durocher, who lives an incredibly dull life, where he drives a cab all day and has for the last 12 years. His only escape from this mundane reality is a photo of a tropical island and that he wants to start his own limo company someday. However, everything changes when the government investigative attorney, Annie Ferrell gets in his cab from the airport. Once he drops Annie off, the next passenger is a man who goes by the name of Vincent, who offers Max a deal that he cannot refuse. Max soon realizes that Vincent isn't the right guy and someone he is better off not knowing but is it too late for him to escape this now. Vincent, played by Tom Cruise, is the main antagonist of the 2004 action thriller film Collateral. Where he plays the role of a professional assassin employed by evil drug lord Felix Reyes Torrener to kill four witnesses and the prosecutor, Annie Ferrell. What appears on the surface versus the reality is very different when it comes to this character, however, that is what makes him interesting. Most villains start as scary and intimidating men, but Vincent on the other hand is warm-hearted, friendly, and pleasant when you first meet him, and underneath all that he is a cold and calculating sociopath. One of the most commendable things about Vincent is the fact that he can adapt and improvise as the situation changes, there is almost nothing that can throw him off his game. He isn't a very emotional person and polite enough if you are not in his way. Number 4. Le Chiffre from Casino Royale. You know, I never understood all these elaborate tortures. It's the simplest thing to cause more pain than a man can possibly enjoy. <laughs> After earning the double O status and the license to kill, secret agent James Bond goes on his first mission. The film's plot revolves around Le Chiffre, who is a banker to the world's terrorists and is participating in a poker game in Montenegro, where he must win back his money to stay safe in the terrorist market. MI6 has its involvement in the prevention of this task, as the boss of MI6, known as M, sends James Bond and Vesper Lind to attend this game and make sure that Le Chiffre doesn't win. Now, Bond must take part in a poker game with incredibly high stakes against Le Chiffre, who is far from easy to beat. Le Chiffre's character is portrayed by Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen, who brings this character to life with incredible charm with a tinge of creepiness that adds more depth to this character. He is one of the best Bond villains so far as he exudes confidence from the get-go, letting the audience know that he means business and might be a villain that they never knew they needed. Le Chiffre's character is also a mix of modern and classic villain tropes, which make him an interesting villain for the more recent audiences, while still being entertaining for the older audiences. The classiest thing about him as a villain is the fact that he isn't trying to take over Earth or bomb a nation, he is simply there, wearing his best suit, trying to win a poker game, and that creates all the tension in his character arc. Le Chiffre is probably the most humanized Bond villains that you will ever come across. Number 5. Hannibal Lecter from The Silence of the Lambs. Starling. Wow, well, Clarice. Have the lambs stopped screaming? Dr. Lecter. The film revolves around a psychopath known as Buffalo Bill who is kidnapping and murdering young women across the country, and the case is in the hands of the FBI, who sends trainee Clarice Starling to interview an irrational and demented prisoner who may provide psychological insight and clues to the killer's actions since it ultimately takes one to know one. This is when we are introduced to the pivotal part of the film, the infamous psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal Lecter played by Sir Anthony Hopkins who comes with certain terms and conditions if he decides to help Starling with this case, which forces her to face her demons. While this film isn't all about Hannibal Lecter, he plays an important role while also branching into a franchise of his own, making him one of the most infamous cannibalistic serial killers in cinema. Sir Anthony Hopkins also won an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in this film. 
He reprises the role for the 2001 adaptation of the 1999 novel Hannibal and the second adaptation of Red Dragon in 2002. Although a serial killer, Lecter is extremely intelligent and cultured, with sophisticated tastes and immaculate manners. He is also deeply offended by rudeness and often kills people who exhibit bad manners, and although the means and ends aren't great, his intentions sometimes aren't the worst. In fact, according to the novel, he prefers to the rude, and Hopkins also described this character as the Robin Hood of killers. His past is explored in the later films, which tell us about how he was traumatized as a child and witnessed the murder of his beloved sister. Hannibal Lecter is sane, still, contained, an all-brain, probably some of the characteristics which separate him from other serial killers and make him even more terrifying. Number 6. Count Dracula from Bram Stoker's Dracula. This 1992 film is based on Bram Stoker's classic novel, Dracula, where a young barrister by the name of Jonathan Harker is assigned to a gloomy and melancholic village in Eastern Europe, where is captured and imprisoned by the undead vampire Dracula. One can call it irony or simply misfortune as Harker's wife Mina resembles Dracula's late wife, making him travel all the to the city of London. As Dracula sets foot in London, Thus begins the reign of terror and seduction as helpless people fall prey to his bloodlust. Soon enough, vampire killer, Professor Abraham Van Helsing, swears to put an end to Dracula's terror and tyranny, but will he succeed? The character of Count Dracula is played by the chameleon of Hollywood, who can truly take on any role and completely transform himself, becoming almost unrecognizable, the one and only, Gary Oldman. This character has far too many powers, from immortality to shape-shifting, to shadow manipulation, and while these physical powers help him get by, he also has a personality that sometimes entraps his victims with ease. The fact that he traveled all the way from Transylvania to Britain for a woman that resembled his late wife shows that he is a romantic of sorts and would go to extents for love, even as far as a different country. In addition, Gary Oldman has the looks and charm to turn any character into someone you want to hate but end up loving, simply because of how well he molds himself, making audience relate to the character. Despite his major flaws, Dracula comes off as a sympathetic character, after all, he is only looking for his lost love. Number 7. Simon Skinner from Hot Fuzz. Morning. Nicholas Angel is by far the best cop London has to offer, with an arrest record higher than any other officer on the force, making every other cop look bad. After Angel's success, his superiors send him to a place where his talents won't be quite so embarrassing, the sleepy, crime-free village of Sanford, where he is partnered with the overeager police officer Danny Butterman. Danny hopes that this will be his chance to experience some real-life action given just how experienced Angel is. However, for a town that is meant to be calm and crime-free, a series of grisly accidents rock the entire town, and Danny's dreams of car chasing and gunfighting action seem more like a reality. Will they be able to catch the man behind these accidents? Our antagonist in this film is Simon Skinner, who is a member of the Neighborhood Watch Alliance, the manager of the local supermarket, and the rival of our infamous cop Angel, and is portrayed by Timothy Dalton. Because Simon is the secondary antagonist, we know he isn't as villainous as most of the others we often see in films, and because this is a comedy film, we see a different villainous personality altogether. Simon Skinner is almost too awkward at times, with certain comments and dialogues that tend to put him in the spotlight, for example, wanting to behead fickle customers. He can be a little overconfident from time to time, but he is smart enough to dodge some serious accusations made by the police. How could I possibly be in several places at once? I'm sure he is almost smooth because we know he's having a good time by getting on Angel's nerves over and over again, while trying to maintain an aura that keeps the audience guessing his intentions and also making them laugh over some common comedic character tropes, 
not to forget his impeccable timing during the whole film. Number 8. Count Dooku from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. That's great. Fear you, Skywalker. The film Star Wars Revenge of the Sith takes place around three years after the beginning of the Clone Wars, and the Republic, along with the Jedi, takes on Count Dooku and the Separatists. The Jedi Council, which is on the brink of collapse, decides to send Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to assist the captured Chancellor. However, soon enough, there is an unfortunate turn of events and things don't go as planned. This film is all about the birth of Darth Vader, the betrayal that leads to animosity between the two brothers, and the power of hope. Although this film mainly focuses on Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker, it would be a shame to overlook the antagonists of this 2005 film. Count Dooku, also known by his Sith name Darth Tyranus, is one of the main antagonists of the Star Wars prequel trilogy and appears in both Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, which was released in 2002, and Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. This character is portrayed by Christopher Lee. Dooku is a prominent political figure back on his home planet of Sereno and is a former Jedi Master who was trained by Yoda and mentored by Ki Gon Jinn. He eventually falls to the dark side of the Force and plays a fundamental role in Sidious' rise to power. This character was received well by the fans and critics, along with being named one of the best villains in the Star Wars franchise so far. Even before Dooku became a Count, far before he fell into the villainous character, he was an extremely hard-working man and a perfectionist, and these traits carried on with him throughout his journey, making him a very strong character. Well, anger, but you don't use them. He was one of the most skilled swordsmen that the galaxy had ever seen, which came with some suave and charm to his character. Number 9. Neil McCauley from Heat. This star-studded film features Robert De Niro as Neil McCauley, who leads a group of coveted and skilled bank robbers taking down major scores around Los Angeles. However, unlike their usual heists, their most recent one goes terribly wrong and ends up in a brutal homicide. Vincent Hanna, played by Al Pacino, finds a clue about the homicide and becomes infatuated with the case, and is now determined to stop Macaulay and his crew of criminals. What ensues is a cat and mouse game between Macaulay and Hannah, and while their intentions and work are completely different from each other, they are similar in a lot of ways and can almost relate to one another, making it all the more interesting to watch. Although Macaulay is a career criminal, this heist was meant to be his last one before retiring and securing himself a financially stable future while avoiding going to jail. He is extremely honorable towards himself and the people who work for him, making sure he never mistreats anyone and remains a reasonable leader to his entire crew. We learn a little about his past and how he lost his entire family and now continues to live in solitary, which makes the audience sympathize with his character. Although he is the main and only antagonist of the film, he has been portrayed more like the anti-hero and is very respectable. The character is well written. However, the real charm comes from Robert De Niro who becomes the sole reason that one can't help but love this charming and polite villain. In a film that has actors like Al Pacino, Val Kilmer, Natalie Portman, and Ashley Judd, it is almost difficult to stand out, especially if you aren't the hero who is saving lives, but Robert De Niro as Neil McCauley does it effortlessly and with perfection. Number 10. Suzanne Stone Moretto from To Die For. My own name is Suzanne Stone. This film revolves around the beautiful Suzanne Stone who wants to be a famous TV personality and marries Larry Moretto, whose father owns a restaurant. Eventually, she starts work for the local station to develop her projects, including one with youth in a public school, where she meets the punks Jimmy, Russell, and Lydia. One day, her husband invites her to work at the restaurant in a talent show and Suzanne sees a threat to her planned career and decides to get rid of her husband. Her plan was fairly simple, to seduce Jimmy and manipulate him to get rid of Larry. 
This plan and Suzanne's tactics are enough for the audience to understand just how cunning she is as a villain and uses her attractiveness and sexuality as a tool to get her way, even if it means getting rid of the man that she married. Suzanne Stone is played by none other than Nicole Kidman who has been one of the most alluring actresses in Hollywood and she brings that same charm to this character on screen as well. Stone is a ruthless femme fatal who will do anything and everything for her career and popularity, to an extent where you might almost admire her dedication and commitment. Her character is loosely based on Pamela Smart, who devised the murder of her husband, which was carried out by her underage lover in 1990. Although her intentions and means to get her fame and freedom were incredibly wrong, she truly charmed her way through them. First, faking interest and love for her husband and then seducing a young boy to kill someone, aren't easy tasks, but she pulled them off with grace, while still maintaining her perfect hair and smile. That's all for this video. Who was your favorite charming villain? Let us know in the comments, and stick around for more exciting content. Stay safe and have a good one.